VG Gaming. VP had to play Fnatic, you know, not really the best opposition at the beginning of the tournament. Uh, I mean, Fnatic didn't do too badly, right? Fnatic, when did Fnatic end? Fnatic went home 5th, 6th, I think. 7th, uh, 8th, yeah. 7th, 8th for Fnatic. Not terrible, you know, top 8 team. They 2 owed them. They 2 owed NIP, who we just saw being knocked out by Evil Geniuses. And NIP was been playing really well. However, those games were kind of draft wins more so than they were straight up, we are better than you and our played you wins. Even though there was an element of that. It was, in my opinion, primarily about the draft that they end up losing that game. Now, however, going up against a Team Secret that has yet to drop a game, I believe? Yeah, they've yet to drop a game, this whole tournament. No, has VP, actually. No, VP dropped a game to both Alliance as well as Forward Gaming. So, VP has lost. Secret have yet to test defeat in this tournament. Definitely the team to watch. Puppy has marshaled his squad and done amazing things with them. Let's see if they can continue the momentum here up against VP, one of the best teams in the world. Let's see what we have. Puppy on the Witch Doctor. He is going to be trying to back up this Monkey King. Being played by mid one. Uh, we do see Yabzo is going to be playing the Earthshaker. Towards the mid lane right now, Nisha on his Morph lane. Is chilling there. And last but not least, Zai in the off lane on the Central War Runner. And they'll be playing up against Virtus Pro. A team that's consistently been top 3 quality. Solo playing the Axe for his team. They're not going to have the uber formed axis game is going to be in the support position roger playing the io nine pasha will be playing on his tiny in the mid lane we do have no one on lena and last but not least ramses triple six on the pl the demon carry himself let's see what we can what we equal will have happen with this pl i'm pretty hyped to see io actually i has been banned and i think literally every game the tournament so it's going to be pretty nice to actually see what Io can do and why it's been uber... Well, we know why it gets uber banned, but I want to see it. I want to see what these two teams roll. So it's going to be a 2-2 two -two bounty rune trade-off. One for VP, two for VP. And secrets. This is going to, yeah, they bring Io top. Like this very much. He's here to keep Ramses alive. Sucko. This is a hero that's already difficult to deal with, especially as the game goes later on Ramses' PL. But with Io, mm. Io only makes that that much more complicated. You know what's crazy, guys? I want you to think about the quality of Dota we've seen today, right? And we've seen over the last couple of months. Um, but in particular at this tournament, right? There's been some exceptional games. And we still... We, we had these games in the absence of Team Liquid and OG. Are you kidding me right now? What a time to be a Dota fan. They've actually put mid one at bottom. He is going to be farming here. They put the Morphling towards the mid lane. I'm going to give Nisha the harder lane versus the Lina. I suppose Lina has a... can't really kill Morphling. Well, no one can really kill Morphling. And maybe Nisha's also just that good. You know, what's his attack range? 350, the Monkey King has, what, 350 as well? 300. So MK has slightly less range. But it's easier for the Monkey King to get caught with the Light Strike Array. So perhaps that's the case. And also, they wanted to match up this Monkey King in the Tiny lane. That's part of the reason they picked this hero, was to dominate the Tiny. And you put the MK here, Tiny. Gonna be hating life. And we do have Jingle Mastery being leveled up at the first level by mid one. And he's doing a great job at putting pressure out onto Pasha already. Starting to well surpass him in CS, but Pasha should still be able to get levels out of the situation. Roger now. Look at this. Creep skipping with Io, lol. This is hilarious. He's not even gonna die because Ramses is right by the tier one tower, so he can provide a very easy target to tether to. Oh, they were trying to get that kill. But unfortunately, they will not be able to interrupt the tether. Ramses will even tip Yapso. And say, hey, buddy. 
something went wrong then on it Nisha in the mid lane actually harassing no one back and both of them will pop some regeneration Nisha might have his self cancelled and it does thanks to this dragon slave the slave of dragons solo he might not be playing core axe but he's still gonna try and push these shenanigans dragging around the creep wave he's not gonna park at bottom and just sit there instead he's gonna move it around they do lose no one or Yapso rather in the mid lane trying to gank no one and Yapso off to not really the best start uncharacteristic for him and VP already starting with the shenanigans they tilt Yapso they tip him right after he messes up at top with the wave okay Fissure will be there no one adapter strike oh my god Nisha is actually on the wrong side of the Fissure to be able to get the kill out no one should tip someone that's where you tip Yapso again Simultaneously, Puppy does get brought down at bottom by 9 Pasha. A little bit regrettable to lose two heroes like that. Shall see no one. LSA drop down onto the Switch Doctor. But Puppy did put the second point into the Voodoo Restoration. I imagine that this is going to be the build if you're playing this hero. That's something else that we didn't really mention, is that how rare it is to see this hero being played. And one of the reasons why this hero is so good is because of it's so good versus Io. And the coconut can also be quite useful. Oh, look at this actually. Roger is in a little bit of trouble, but Pasha creates space for Roger by tossing back Monkey King. That's a really heads-up play from Pasha. You toss the Monkey King... You're like, right, there's not going to be space for you to complete the last hit of the Jingle Mastery and therefore get off an OP Bounder Strike. And Pasha's actually been doing quite fine here at the bottom. But I think a lot of this also has to do with Solo bringing him creeps. Uh, we see Solo. Man, Pasha is not going to be allowing Mon Monkey King. To do anything this game just keeps tossing him back but the fact that they have this IO here means that Ramses is alone at top but doesn't seem to be a problem he has 31 CS to his name right now and his eyes also getting some decent farm but both of these heroes are just gonna trade farm Zai He's gonna get Spirit Lance, but because he has this Ring of Health, it's unlikely he's gonna die here. Ramses might try. He does have level 3 into the Phantom Rush. He's gonna go Doppelganger forward. He wants to really find Zai. And he's already used the Phantom Rush. The Spirit Lance, will it be there? It will. One more right click is all he needs. And Ramses does secure the kill onto the Centaur. So Zai got a bit cocky. He stuck around longer than he should have. Without backing off. And we also see mid lane. Nisha did manage to get off the attribute shift. I was going into the strength anyway. Nisha's so good as a player, actually. Like, he's kind of crazy. What a champion. Top lane, Zai. Might find himself in trouble again. He's being surrounded by Solo, getting body blocked by the axe. But there's no Berserker's call, so he should be fine. Roger also pitches up to the fray. Throwing in some wisp balls for good measure. However, no kill is mounted onto Jai. They're actually still chasing him. Solo with Roger. They're going to force him to shrine. But that's not necessarily the same as saving his life. He's still going to get right clicked down by Solo and Roger. They're going to try. They're going to be forcing him home no matter what. Perhaps maybe not. He didn't get the conclusive kill onto him. And because, like I said, he has this ring of health. He can just stick around wait and he'll be back up to health he's gonna be okay mid one erstwhile does get a kill with puppy onto pasha they throw out the maledict and it's enough to bring a tiny low enough to die i can't believe nisha's actually drawing even a cs with no one just leaving this morphling hero middle man this actually might be the solution because most of the time lena dominates mid matchups but against a sufficiently skilled morphling just consistently morphs 
into the strength when put in danger. Fissure now gonna block her off. Wave of terror will come out. Not wave of terror, just normal waveform. I mean, it does cause some terror that waveform, but not the same thing. Nisha will just continue to get farmed. And this is gonna be okay for him. One of the things that I am hoping to see from Team Secret this game is as soon as they find us a oh, oh, like Guna Blade literally did nothing. Nisha is perfectly fine. I think no one was just chancing there. He was like, let me see what happens, but ends up not taking place. Um I'll hope to see Team Secret as soon as this laning phase breaks down. Because right now they do have the betterment, like they have heroes that can get involved a little bit sooner without blink daggers and the like. All of it's thanks to the stampede in particular. So uh, they need to try and deal with Ramses as soon as possible. Ramses is actually going to get another kill. Zaya's dead. Zaya's very dead. Spirit Lance will catch him. <coughs> like Ramses is going to get this kill. He's going to double gang and break the trees. There we go. Easy kill. Poppy does show up now. He does get the mana deck off onto a ton of these illusions. However, Ramses. Is in the trees right now. Swaps back his TP scroll. Yapso. Looking for him. Yapso's gonna find him. And he's gonna interrupt the TP. Ramses is dead. Feels bad, man. If he had his TP scroll in his inventory the whole time, would have been great. But sadly, it did not. And also, that's also gonna mean that he has to walk out of base when he respawns. That's a huge kill for Yapso to find. This is also going to ensure, let me think, he spawns in 5 seconds. They're probably going to be able to get 4 bounty runes because of this as well. Or at least 3. Um, okay, definitely 2. We'll see how mid one approaches this bottom lane. Because he might not actually be interested in leaving to go get a bounty rune. And it looks like VP want to confirm that they get this one. And they're going to try and encroach upon this and fight here. <coughs> Puppy does have this coconut. We'll throw it out, mid one, we'll throw in the Wukong's command with the Bounder Strike as well. They'll get this one, Maledic laid out onto no one. No one was not inside the Wukong, so he didn't take too much damage from it. Yeah, so they will just get the three. <clears throat> Damn. It's interesting how both of these teams value the Bounty Rune so much that they're willing to commit ultimates in order to confirm them. Just like across games, not just in this game in particular. But in general, both these teams are like, yo, guys, that shit is very important. Get those bounties. Nisha now. <clears throat> Back towards middle. Stampede at top. Don't try and get a kill onto the Faceless Void or the PL. Phantom Lancer in trouble. Enchant Totem will be there. And the Wisp, though, showing up to try and ensure that they can't get this kill. But solo at the Berserker's Call, holding back mid one and Zai. And because of the heal from Roger, Ramses will survive. And that right there, what just happened right there, that's why you ban Wisp. Man, what a time to get that tether. We see now Zai. Spirit Lance thrown out onto his face. Uh, there will be a jump in from mid one. The Hoof Stomp will be there. They want to kill Roger first and foremost because they understand that if Roger lives, PL will too. And they get the one kill mid one, looking to chase down Ramses. Needs one more attack. Can he get off the tree dots into the primal spring? Tries to evade the avalanche using the doppelganger. But looks like PL will survive. Ramses is cool. <coughs> there was no jump in with the primal spring from mid one, sadly. I'm kind of surprised that he maxed out the boundless strike. Normally we see primal spring being maxed. But if I see Bounder Strike being maxed out like this, I suspect he's gonna go for the Echo Saber build. They're gonna smoke now. Him and Yapzo. Looking to try and find no one. Hastrun will be picked up by Nisha. And Axe. Solo. Primal Spring will be there with the waveform. They're gonna easily find this kill. And Nisha picks it up quite quickly. Stampede was used by Zai towards the bottom side of the map. Ramses is going on to Roger. The coconut bouncing off. And have they gotten off the Maledict? 
or else Ramses will not die here. He's very low on HP. Mid one does show up. Drops a Wukong's command as well. Ramses is in trouble now. He's being healed up still by Roger. But then the LSA landed onto mid one. Mid one gets off the boundless strike. But the heals are there too much onto Ramses. Ramses still up. No one though. Surrounded. The Guna Blade will fly out. There's the Echo Slam from Yapso though. Bringing down the Wisp as well as the Lina. And we see Ramses is going to be so low as well. He's going to die too. Double kill for Yapso. The call from Solo to give him additional armor. But now Nisha also shows up. But not going to try and go for this kill. Invertus Pro, three heroes will go down, a single hero will fall for secret, or oh, four heroes in fact, because Axe died, did, when did Axe die? Oh, Axe died beforehand, yeah, he respawned. What an Echo Slam from Yapzo, catching the Lina and the Wisp, bursting them immediately, and taking away the support system for the Phantom Lancer. It's one of those few games where PL doesn't have a naturally good time. It really sucks playing against Maledictus PL. Sucks playing against the Death Ward because it will focus on you. You can't dodge away with your illusions from the spell. Sucks playing against Earthshaker. Sucks playing against Centaur. Sucks playing against Monkey King even. But that will not deter Ramses, hopefully. On his journey to try and win this game for his team. The Dire Scan does fly out, doesn't connect onto anybody. No one will be able to pick up his regen rune without too much difficulty. Get closer and closer towards having this Yule Scepter. So it's interesting with Team Secret, right? Because they're 1k gold ahead, but their two cores. At least one of their cores, Zai, isn't even a, he's the lowest net worth hero in the game in terms of their core heroes. And mid one only just surpassed them in terms of net worth. But it's a slow and steady game, right? And again, it's all about the morphling. So maybe like the previous series we saw from Evil Geniuses, doesn't really matter how much farm everyone else has. As long as Terror Blade had farm, you can win the game. Same situation here with the morphling. Morphling can uber win the game by himself. Just needs his team to create space for him. And thus far they are attempting to do so. Bounty runes will be claimed. Puppy. His coconut flying in different directions. Wukong's command does get dropped down. Death Ward gonna get triggered out as well. Solo almost gonna get brought down. Mid one needed the Wukong's command. If they had a Maledict drone, Solo would be dead right now. Away from forward coming in. Nisha. And I say he steals it away from no one. No one now. Dragon slaved up in the adaptive strike with the coconut bouncing forward. And Yapso able to get a kill onto no one. Zai does end up falling on the top side of the map. Pasha and Ramses surround the center and kill him. And also VP managed to snag all the bounty rooms there. Dyer's bottom tower. Nisha will have Yasha after this next camp is cleared. And Pasha picks up the Soul Ring now, so with the Soul Ring, Blink Dagger, he is just going to be moving across the map as much as possible, trying to get kills. But he actually might use the time to rather just finish the Shadow Blade, have this as a farming Soul Ring, as it were. But Team Secret should be aware of the fact that as this game goes later, Morphling versus PL, always going to be a PL favored in just a purest scenario. And this PL has a Wisp to back him up, so even more difficult to actually deal with. So things are going quite well right now for Secret. Oh, they're going okay, but they need to do more. And they need to start taking down these towers. They managed to secure the tier 1 tower in the mid lane. But the top tier 1 still basically at full HP, bottom tier 1, similar situation. And then VP, they are going to be the ones that decide to smoke. Mid one is probably going to die here. Yep, Pasha, we're able to get the toss up onto Solo with the Berserker's Core. They get the Laguna Blade out and mid one won't die. But we do see the Maledict drop down onto Pasha as well as the Death Ward. So Pasha taking a lot of damage. Is he going to die from this? Only level 1 Maledict, so he's actually fine. Yules up into the air, Ramsey's chasing down Puppy. Puppy will be the next one to fall. Solo doesn't have the Blink Dagger. 
but slow chasing his eyes, slowed down with the battle hunger, no one might be able to get off the LSA, he does succeed in doing so, and they get the toss forward of the IO, they really want to find this kill, Solo's going to look for the call, doesn't even need it, just cutting blades him, and Virtus Pro, they take the impetus, they go forward, I was saying that their lineup needs Blink Daggers to be effective, but they have the, the key Blink Dagger already. And unfortunately for Team Secret, Zai does not have the same. So this Earthshaker, or this Tiny cannot have... Basically has the... Doesn't have any competition in terms of his initiation potential across the map right now. Because Zai is certainly not ready. Ramsey's now net worth leader slow, has diffuser blade, almost has his Yasha. We see the Yasha has been finished by Nisha. He's halfway towards the ultimate orb. He bought Morbid Mask, PL bought Diffusal. Even though I've seen Morbid Masks and Mask of Madnesses on PLs before, Ramsey's actually gonna get caught out right now. Echo Slam was used by Yapzo, who also has his own Blink Dagger. Alright. Cool. Secret. Trying to make the game interesting. Yep, so we're gonna try and bolt immediately into that Aghanim Scepter as fast as humanly possible. Get that long range jump in potential onto as many of these heroes as possible. Solo now also has Blink Dagger. So we've got double Blink, 4 VP. Only have the single one on Yapzo for secret right now. It still needs Zai's, but Zai looks like he's gonna build the Crimson Guard, the Pipe. Not gonna worry about Blink Dagger for now. Just gonna play around with access to the Stampede. There might be a fight breaking out here at bottom. This bounty rune could be contested with VP smoked up as three. They've already laid out some vision. They see Nisha. They really wanted to reveal this blink dagger. And the host stomp will connect onto Axe. Bounder strike onto two heroes. Solo is actually going to die very early on the back. And will they be able to catch anybody else though? They know that no one is in the vicinity right now. The stampede used by the team. Fissure will be there onto no one. No one waveform through. And mid one will be able to get the kill. Double kill for the monkey. That completes enough money to buy the first components for the BKB if you want it. Uh, sh I don't think you should get BKB. What should MK get here? I wouldn't even mind the Maelstrom really. With this Echo Saber. Help them farm crazy amounts. And they're gonna need some wave clear damage versus PL later on in the game anyway. So yeah. I'm actually gonna relocate now. They're gonna try to take a fight at bottom. They found Zai. Initiation went in from Pasha. Can they kill him before he TPs out? No, they cannot. Zai with the Crimson God. Very happy he bought this item now. Without the Crimson God, he'd be dead. So that was the first relocate of the game. And sadly. It does not succeed in a securing a kill for the team. Puppy also was able to get the D ward off on here on the high ground. Radiant are scanning. So Radiant scan will it trigger someone? Yes it will. Catches Pasha. This will tell mid one to be a little bit careful in this area of the map. Please buy Maelstrom fam. Please, for me. I don't think he will, though. <coughs> Puppy's probably like him. Oh, yes, he is. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is exactly what he should be doing. Build Maelstrom. It'll be great. You'll love it. PL or style. It's really strange, right? Like, there's periods of some small, intense skirmish, and then everyone's just back to farming.
Pashala is smoked up, however, right now in going behind the lines of Team Secret, laying out some Observer Wards in the process. And this encroachment will not be scouted. He's going to be buying his Echo Saber on the Tiny. Uh, Solo is dead. Oh, he's not actually. He just blinks away. And Zai can't catch him because he doesn't have a blink tag of his own. Okay, dead anyway. Yeah, that might have been a little bit of overkill, guys. Um, I'm not sure he needed all of you to be there. But mid one does now have the Smellstrom. He will farm faster. It's better against PL than whatever either item he could have gotten right now. And synergizes amazing with Echo Saber because both Echo Saber hits can actually trigger the Maelstrom. Now we can start building DKB happily. Zai, how far is Zai gonna be from the pipe before he can build? Because he has at least the Hood of Defiance flying out to him now. No, he doesn't. Still needs the... Wait, this is the hood, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Still needs the headdress as well as the recipe to finish off the full pipe. But he's well on his way. Pasha was pushing out the top lane. Uh, does now have also his Echo Saber flying out to him. So items being achieved for everybody here. Top lane, we do see the Maledict flying out. Oh, this coconut. It's just going to be bad times for you, my friend. Puppy, how much damage does Puppy deal there? Woo! Almost 2,000 damage dealt by this Wish Doctor. And now suddenly, Team Secret's in the Roshan pit. And this Rosh will go down there. Aegis of the Immortal now safely in tow of Nisha he's gonna go top and be like well you mooks didn't actually finish this tower I'm gonna show you what's up I'll make it happen Ramsey's still farming bottom gonna go into the spot of Tarask very average build for PL you know as much as, as annoying as Terrorblade is right to watch and play against honestly I prefer TB TB Dota to PL Dota PL Dota is just disgusting Really is just disgusting. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Now though, they're gonna try and bait a fight out of VP. They don't have any vision, so they don't scout no one right now. LSA does come out. Ooh! He has no idea how lucky he is that his Dragon Slave cancelled out the Blink Dagger from Yapso. We will trigger the BKB now, so no one... No one's like, come on guys, relax. He's gonna just buy it. Aganim Scepter immediately after this, so they can have some way to target Nisha, who presumably will buy BKB as well as the Monkey King. Pipe of Inside has been purchased up by Yapso, and Puppy's Smoke will pop. All the heroes for VP are grouped up together, so fighting right here might be a bad idea without the Centaur. Who's not even building Blink Dagger this game. Next item he's going for is the Shiva's God. So he wants to go for the Not Die Bolt. Mid lane, as soon as Pasha shows up, the boys and Nisha show him down. They destroy his life, Jesus Christ. And now they're gonna go take the Tion Tower. Such a methodical situation for Nisha. He's like, well, I'm just gonna kill the tower at top, run bottom, and kill that one too. And get a kill in the process in the mid lane. Stampede now used. Oh my god, they found no one. And they're also going to get the tier 2 tower, because there's a siege wagon here, and mid one doing all the damage in the world with this echo saber, and they're pushing out this bottom lane as well with Nisha and Zai. So super economical move coming in here for Team Secret. Heart of Tarask built up by Ramses. He finishes that particular item. Now, we do see tier 3 tower. Being seized upon right now. All the mana is taken away from Nisha. But they should still be able to get this tier 3. And especially waiting because no one is dead right now, not back to life. 
and there's gonna be a hoofstall for Zai. They don't have access to the Stampede right now to be able to use that to get away with. Fissure will make sure that Pasha and Solo can't easily catch up. Two of the tough heroes. Wukong's command by mid one. They want to try and get this kill. Will there be an echo slam by Yap? So he's going to go in onto uh, the PL. PL going to lose his life inside the Wukong's command. The command ring will be able to get this kill. At the same time, Axe did die as well. Roger making his way away. He's looking for somebody to get the tether onto him. Nisha, though, will find him. Snipe him with the adaptive strike. And they're like, well, you know, Lina's the only one back here with nine Pasha. We can try to kill you here. Laguna Blade did fly out to take down the kill onto the Aegis of the Immortal. However, the death war channeled up by Puppy is enough to also remove the life away from no one. So Team Secret now. Man, looking um, very impressive at the moment. They take the bottom lane of Rax. They're looking towards getting two for one rare. Oh my goodness. Pasha, the avalanche toss flies through. Boundless Strike will catch him. Spirit Vessel, whose Spirit Vessel is that even? Okay, they will back away right now though. But I suspect that this is a fake back. They could easily try to get back into this one. Monkey King, mid one is already sitting on a tree. The coconut will bounce, will slow down Pasha. And they do get the stun out onto Zai. Puppy, slow down, destroy. They take his life away. The home stomp coming in from Zai onto the other side of the fight. And here is going to be Nisha. Jumping in with his BKB, using the stolen call, adaptive strike, they are able to get this kill onto the IO, Echo Slam going out around Ramdi's, Ramdi's in trouble right now, but the damage coming in from Laguna Blade onto Nisha, Nisha morphs back into the Morphling, and the Morphling is going to be able to get the kill onto Pasha, down outside the base, Fissure will catch the Ramdi's, they're going to be bouncing around with this coconut, they do not have any damage to kill ever like Ramsey's right now, but they do bring down Solo, the Stampede, oh no, it comes out, and they are going to be able to find Ramsey's. They chase him down, they get the kill, a buyback from Solo, and they just call GG. Virtus Pro recognize when it's over. And wow, Team Secret looking like the team to beat right now. By far the most impressive performance we've seen from any team today. 15, 14k gold lead for them, almost at the 15 mark. And they effectively defenestrate the side of Virtus Pro. 10 to 23 is the kills. Experience almost at 15k. Wow, secret man. And everybody actually played a very positive role in contributing to that victory. We saw Puppy always on point with the Coconut as well as the Death Wards, ensuring that they got a, quite a few key kills necessary to win that game. Yapso was crucial with Echo Slams locking down the PL. Mid one on the Monkey King, not only did he ensure that Pasha didn't have an uber dominant lane, also was able to secure a few kills onto this PL himself. Of course, Zai. Okay, Zai didn't really do too much. So Zai just didn't die, soaked up a lot of pressure, and threw in Stampedes. Half the time, he wasn't even with his team. It was like a 4v5, but the one that was out wasn't Nisha, but it was Zai on the center. So he didn't even buy a Blink Dagger on this hero. And VP. They did try. They had the Ion Strat, they had PL, they had Lina. Just didn't really feel like it was going anywhere. Honestly, and Team Secret felt too beefy as well. These heroes have a very difficult time dying. And we see that. Like, nobody died more than four times on their team. And only Puppy and Zaya that that happened to, so...